everyone good morning I want to thank everyone for being here this morning we are so thrilled to be in your homes this morning this is Centerville Assemblies of God and I am Pastor Jeff and I am sending a message directly from our homes we are still transmitting from our homes as we're continuing to have all the measures that are required for us to be safe we want to bless everyone and thank everyone for being with us we want to thank the Lord for your life and we want to give God the glory and the praise this morning for a tremendous worship time that we have together as a family in Christ thank you Lord and thank you Jeff and Donna for your effort and your dedicated time that you surrender unto the Lord glory be unto the King of Kings we want to give a few minutes for people to be able to connect and we want to welcome everyone not only from here from our nation in the United States from the state of Virginia where we're transmitting in our church Centerville assemblies of God where God is pouring new wine is located in the county of Fairfax in the city of Centerville in the state of Virginia so we are in assemblies of God church spirit filled and in passionate love for Christ we want to share this moment and let everyone know that we're connected um, we want to also welcome people that are watching by means of long distance whether they're abroad overseas United States um, and not only United States but I'm talking about um, Puerto Rico and obviously Europe and other places that I know that people may be watching different states so we want to give thanks to the Lord and glory to the Lord praise the living God as we're connecting and and thanking God that um, please let us know that you can hear us clearly and that you're connecting we want to really thank the Lord for your presence and for being with us let me tell you we're two or more gathered in his name there he is and he's pouring his magnificent presence what a beautiful day God has given us we want to share an exhortation today um, and probably condensed and, and, and compact but yet something that will encourage us and continues to lead us in the path that we're walking to seeking the Lord I want to thank everyone for joining us on Wednesday nights during our discipleship and, and worship service also for Friday nights during our prayer nights um, that we pray between six and seven we're so grateful to God that he is making himself real in our lives present and accounted for we can trust in the Lord in all our ways he is faithful we want to thank God for all those faithful watchmen that always stand in the gap in prayer and they come in agreement and they come and stand in the word of God interceding for others we're having and continuously hearing of the great things that the Lord is doing in the lives of those that we're praying for for the word of God is true it's powerful and it's alive and God will always fulfill it amen thank God for so many people that are standing in the gap as leaders and they're faithful to the Lord faithful to CAG and uplifting the hands of the anointed one you've been praying and sustaining my life and I'm grateful for that I want to thank God for your lives and I want to thank the Lord obviously for the work of his kingdom thank you Lord for the members of the body of Christ and everything that they do what a tremendous times that we're living today and we give God honor and glory amen if you have any prayer petitions any circumstances you'd like to share on the comments please do so make sure that you take the time and then and now you use the platform that God has given you to uh, of your Facebook and share this transmission so others may be able to co-participate not only that that the seed that it's being planted and released today someone may hear it at any given time someone may be in their homes in the verse in the very remote places of the world this communication this message it's going to reach and someone it's going to hear it when they most need it how many can say amen to that so i'm going to ask you to take right now a moment and share this posting share it as a live posting and let it let it be sent into your page and let your people the people that you have as friends the friends of friends be able to see it you know you don't need to follow that posting remain in the main posting but go ahead and, and, and share it and uh and and just title it 
it as it is. You know, this is a live transmission where God is imparting word into into our lives. And, and I just wanted to share it. If you do so, God is going to bless you today. I've already always put a title on, on, on the messages and exhortations that we bring forth. But this is a very crucial time where we're setting the word of God forth that it may do what it was intended to do. Amen. And we are those instruments of blessing to be able to reach other people. Amen. So praise the Lord that we can impact our families, we can impact our friends, and we can reach out to them in such a manner that God has given us these tools. And that's the work of evangelist. That you go out and do the work of evangelist, and by these means we can do so in such a powerful and extraordinary way with this technology. Amen. How many are rejoiceful this morning? How many are thankful to God? for his mercies and his grace. How many are thankful that today we can breathe, we can get up with strength, and we can declare the goodness of God's grace. We can enjoy family, we can enjoy health, we can enjoy the promises that God has instilled upon our lives through his son, Jesus Christ. Today, we can say openly, thank you, Jesus, for you gave your life in the cross and you've given us life in abundance. Let us fulfill God's purpose in our lives continuously amen praise the living god how many are thankful today for the lord amen how many are thankful for the life that the lord has given us amen we want today to know the lord further to ex experience the lord further and to grow into the knowledge of who he is amen praise the living god for each and one of you that are obviously connecting with us and thankful for your lives we give god the glory you know, in times like these, when some people may be least seeking God, we are determined to stand in the gap in the middle of the circumstances and seek out the Lord and continue to press on and to continue to walk in the Word, walk by the Word, in the Spirit, and by the Spirit. Amen. We're going to pray this morning and thank the Lord for all that He gives us and all the provision that He gives. And we always want to pray out over the the offerings and the tidings and all your lives and everyone that's connecting and we want to be grateful as we always bring the first fruits we are seeing god's hand moving continuously we're thankful for the uh prayer um praises that we are receiving um you know as as we are seeing god continuously move in the lives you know we believe for the things and hope for the things that are not seen and hope for the things that we expect for they are already been done and that's what faith is you know and we walk in that faith amen let us pray this morning in the name of jesus and thank him for this beautiful day if you have any circumstances that you may be living right now physically right now we want to pray for your life that you may now be able to focus into what god has in store for your life and that you may receive restoration the healing power of Jehovah Rapha over your life in Jesus name and the healing power to be touching your lives and those that are surrounding you amen let's stand in the gap father lord we thank you in the name of Jesus this morning for such a wonderful blessing to be here gathered together as the body of Christ we do not take it lightly lord for we know that you are immense and tremendous precious O oh lord god that reigns in authority and power we believe in your sovereignty and your authority and that you are the providence god you are the lord the great i am and lord we thank you and we regret we're so grateful this morning my lord for your goodness and your grace and your mercies your faithfulness that endure forever today lord we can look upon the lord the sun and the mountains and the clouds and see your father your magnificent glory that it's undeniable father your divine attributes before our eyes so therefore father lord your creation your power and your authority is undeniable lord we pray this morning, Father, that every word that is spoken will be nurturing, Father, and uplifting for each and one of those hearers, Lord, and everyone that reaches to the con to the contact of this communication in this video, whether live or later in the morning, late in the afternoon, or in the wee times of the hour. I believe, my Lord, 
that you're reflecting the love, Lord, and that you, Father, are touching their lives. I believe, my Lord, right now, that people are being touched by your love, by your peace, like never before, the peace of God that exceeds all understanding. Right now, my Lord, Father, I pray and I thank you, my Lord, for the lives that are listening, Lord, through these means, Lord. And I pray restoration over their hearts, my Lord. I pray that you have compassion and mercy over them. Lord, right now, Father, I pray that your word may be, Father, Lord, creating in them a, Father, true desire to seek you, to know you. And, Father, to confess you as their Lord and Savior. For those who are, Father, Lord, walking in the ways that you have called them, I pray restoration and reassurance, my Lord, that they will continue to be steadfast. I pray for the first fruits of every single person as they offering in the morning when they open their eyes to worship and to glorify you, my Lord, and to give unto you their lives and surrender to do your will. I pray for the all, oh Lord, for their offerings, for the tidings, for everything, Lord, and that they bring unto you as their first fruits, Father. We pray for the multiplication of those that will be given and father use for your kingdom while with great stewardship and guidance of your spirit lord for your glory for do the to do the work of the ministry father from here locally father unto other lives and further lord unto father lord unto the ends of the world father we preach your gospel and that father people may be saved lord i thank you my lord for the work that you're doing upon this earth lord for your hand is moving mightily mightily lord to touch people's lives and transform them lord i bless your people father i bless your body your church lord and your beautiful family lord that stands here lord as the body of christ father let your anointing your glory your presence father move swiftly into their lives right now father let your love and your peace father lord just inundate father fill father lord overflow their lives and their cups lord father the, the anointing of your fresh oil and wine flow right now father i release and i open the floodgates according to your word my lord father that it will be released unto your people let right now the fruits of the spirit father lord right now the gifts of the spirit be manifested lord over the lives of your people my lord father i pray healing power in jesus name right now and declare my lord that restoration comes into their lives i speak into their bones their structure the anatomy of their body and i declare and command freedom healing power in jesus mighty name amen and amen hallelujah won't you share this message and share it for someone there really true need out there further than what god has given us he's given us abundance it is time to share that magnificent love through these means and god has given us this opportunity to share the word of god and to be able to go unto others and be able to say here is the bread of life this is how you impart that bread of life hallelujah you share these messages unto many others that may and are in need there's a world out there that is hungry that does not have the food that it's been serving over your life and been given unto you jesus says i am the bread of life whoever eats of me shall not hunger and i give them eternal life whoever drinks of me shall never thirst again my lord hallelujah jesus is the fountain of our lives amen Jesus is the very essence of everything that we are and who we are and who we desire. Hallelujah. And people are hungry right now. Would you be care um would you be a good stewardship and take this word right now and share it with others? Send it as a private invitation, send it as a private, you know, message, send it as a as a as a full front um sharing of your page. You know, share it as the Lord is speaking to our lives. Let us share the fullness of what God has given us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm thrilled to be here this morning and be able to share the word of God with your lives. I'm thrilled to be able to gather with you together. Let me tell you that God is doing a magnificent work in our lives and he will never cease from completing his perfect work in our lives. How many can say amen to that? Hallelujah. I wanted to share with you this morning a message that's impacted my life and it's caused for my life to be obviously 
further transformed into the knowledge of who Christ is, into the desires of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we ask the Holy Spirit to reveal truth unto our lives this morning through his word. Amen. I've, I've, I want to share this by calling it, we've, we've made for the mountains, made for the mountains. I normally try to put the title of the message you know, on the posting, made for the mountains. I believe that God has made us all to climb, to climb. God didn't make us to live in the lowlands. He made us to be spiritually in, in our lives to climb mountains. He made us to be climbers. He has equipped every single one of us in our spiritual life to become what Almighty God had in mind. In the day that you were born, from the very day that you were born, that he was willing to equip us with every and everything that he wanted us and wanted you to be. That's beautiful. Once people um, were saved, once we were saved by the grace of God, you know, your, your lives have been described and can be described as a life that has been continuously climbing. How many feel like their lives has been continuously climbing? Like climbing on a mountain, you know, it, it, it does involve overcoming obstacles and at the very least, expending energy. How many know that you spend much energy, essentially spiritual energy, and uh, as it's walk with the Lord and it seems like you're constantly climbing? You see, we're going to draw from the scripture in the book of um, Samuel, um, where David is speaking, and uh, David is expressing, you know, his his kingship. He's speaking about his his. And this chapter was chapter twenty two of Second Samuel, verse thirty four. David is speaking almost at the end of his life. In in the book of Second Samuel, you know, and it's it's he's he's speaking of a song of praise and adoration and worship. So I'm sure Jeff and the worship team and many of us that are worshipers, as God has called all of us to be worshipers, we can relate to this. This is a song of praise, of adoration and worship in the verse of, uh, in verse 34 of 2 Samuel chapter 22. If you would like to join me, in, and this is what David says, he has made my feet like hind feet. He has sitteth me in the high places. I'm going to repeat that, you know, 2 Samuel 22nd chapter of verse 34. And, sat, and, and, and David said, he made my feet like hind feet and he seated me in high places. Now, hind is a female, a, a female deer. It's a, it's of, of a follow deer, follow deer. Uh, their feet are made to be able to clutch on rocks. It's almost like they can grasp in such a matter. And then the whole idea here, and, and they can actually, they, they can, they can clutch and hold on to the to the rocks in such a matter and hold them in place you know um in places that you and i cannot uh, stand straight the whole idea here is that of making my my feet like hind feet when david is saying these words it's not only that what a deer was made to be in rocky places and mountain climbing but 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 to be extremely swift you see a deer can actually jump leap 20 to 25 feet um any any moment you know just he he just leaps and suddenly you know he's gone but likewise the same way you know his feet can actually be used as weapons his feet can use be used as weapons what a tremendous you know um um declaration of david when he says he has made my feet like hind feet hallelujah tremendous weapons are these of of these deers of of these fallow deers you see and and they can actually be used you know to protect himself these small deers you know now these are not the deers that we have here they're they're absolutely different unique deers you know the deers we're we're speaking about they're they're absolutely um, different deers they're hind type of of, of deers and uh, um, and these these are obviously not the ones we have here uh, that we see 
in our country. But they're talking about these very small deers. They're they're extreme. They're they're small, but they're extremely fast. They're formidable fighters. They fight, and 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 when they are encountered or or they find themselves, you know, in danger, they will be fighting. They're not going to back off. You know, there's a lot of things we can see about the deer here, and that's why David is saying, "The Lord has made my feet as hind feet." You know, if you ever have a chance, just, you know, look it up. Not now, please. What a hind, you know, is and, and you know, what type of, 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 of this she, that we're talking about here of this specific deer, you know, so that way you can have a clear idea. But this is a stronger, little, strong, little deer. And, and uh, the Bible views as, you know, as we look at the Bible verses back and back and back to back over and over again, we, we can't help from viewing how David thought of his life. David thought of his life that it had headaches and heartaches and burdens and difficulties and, and you know, where you find yourself at times, you know, that you're running in life and, 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 and you're, you're, you're climbing these mountains. And each time you read in particular chapters where he's expressing, you know, how he's felt in the walk with the Lord, you know, you can see it in Psalms, you can see it here and, and you can see his expression. And these expressions, you find that David is saying things like, I, I looked upon the hills and where did my help come? My help came from the Lord who have made the heavens and the earth. And he also talks about, you know, even if I walk in the shadow of the valley of death, I shall not fear. These are experiences and moments that David lived difficult, treacherous. You know, they were defining, consuming, and overwhelming, treachering, suffering times that involved fear, despair, despair, loneliness, hopelessness. But even in the midst of that, he says, you have made my feet like hind. You see, in the midst of that, just keep in mind that, you know, here, David, it's almost coming to the end of his life, you know, as we read throughout, you know, some of the scripture in, in, in 2 Samuel. But, but, you know, all the way, David can say how, you know, that God was showing that even through these times, he was declaring the Lord has given him the ability, the ability to climb these mountains. See, all the way through how many times he talks about the mountains, you know, David, he says, the Lord has made my feet like hind feet, you know, and he has placed me in high, high places. He has placed me there. I believe that God has made us to climb. All of us, not all, not some of us, uh, all of us. He's not made us to wander around in the flatlands and the lowlands you know, to make life easy, and it does not mean that we're not to enjoy life. This is not what I'm saying, but if you ask a mountain climber, right, if he enjoys to climb, he says, I enjoy, absolutely enjoy what I do, you know. They, they, they won't swap what they're doing for anything in the world. See, God didn't make us to live in the lowlands. He made us to spiritually live in the mountains, in the higher places. Excuse me. He made us to climb. You hear this? And he made us, he equipped us, every one of us, we are equipped for our spiritual life to become all that Almighty God had for us today. From the day we were born, he was willing to equip us with everything he wants us to be. You hear that? These are affirming words. Let us let us ask ourselves this. Let me ask you this. Let us ask ourselves. Do do you see that in the slips in in, in the walk that we have, you know, um that we we realize that if if we have to be extremely careful, you know, if if not we don't realize that in our daily walk it seems like we're slipping, slipping constantly. You see why? Because it, it, these things may catch you by surprise and not realizing. 
You know, have you ever caught yourself doing something you realize, well, why am I doing this with so much effort and dedication? You know, and it's and you find yourself that you have slipped away from truly, you know, the purpose that God has called you. A lot of people are working for leisure. A lot of people are, are working, you know, for the day. They, for the day they're going to stop working. You ever heard that? People are working for the day they're going to stop working. They're climbing for the day that they're going to stop climbing and the day they're going to stop living, you know, living, you know, in, in a matter that they can just go up in the valley and say, well, I, I don't have to respond to no one. I, I can do what I please. You know, I, I can do what I don't have to tell. I do what anyone tells me what to do. You see, we find ourselves at, in this complex complexity about life that at times, you know, people are living and working so hard, you know, to spend the rest of their days of life at ease and comfort, please and leisure. And I don't know, but I believe that the Bible, wherever you seek, there is not a scripture that contributes to all of that. Not a scripture, not a scripture. I want to make a, 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 a short pause here to say, once I was sharing with one of my spiritual fathers, which is actually uh, considered to be my pastor, um, and uh, Bill Roberts, and we're sharing, and we spoke about a conversation that just, you know, was generated, uh, you know, out of, uh, you know, out of the moment. And uh, he shared with me words that relate to the fact is that, you know, within his many years of ministry, you know, people come and they normally would ask, you know, when are you or would you consider to retire? And in his do honestly, he shares with me, he says, Jeff, you know, it's curious people ask me that question because, you know, what would I retire to? What would I do at retirement? It would be the same thing I'm doing. I would continue to live God's will and minister to people's lives is no different he said what would I do I go to a church and 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 become part of that church as a retired person and and became a you know a serve in the capacity that God has given me my gifts I would continue to do the same thing so there is no such thing he says to me you know, that I depart from the very calling of God for my life. You know, it is what God has called me. God didn't make us for the valleys, to live in the valleys, my people. He made us for the mountains because, you see, God has a goal for your life. He wants us always to be moving upward in our lives, not floundering around, not going down here in a little bit of life of ease and comfort and pleasure. You see, there is something about the mountains that's not true about the lowlands, the valleys, and the coastlands. I want you to think about this for a moment, you know. In first, it's in first, I want you to see that in the mountain peaks, you get a better, best view of everything. There's something about the mountains that there is not only a better view, but I'm telling you that you can get from a higher mountain, a higher peak. But here, here's here's what you got to realize. Have you ever been to one of these, any mountain, any any peak of any mountain? I'm, I'm not, you know, it's it just, and you look around, you know, and, and you can see as far as your eye can reach. It's amazing. You see, in New York City, there's no mountains compared to that. You know, in New York City, I don't think there's any real mountains. But when you speak about, like, I've experienced to be in the countryside and be able to see the the uh, the a city that's called Calle it's a huge i mean it's just amazing and this is one of so many and and i know there's many mountains all across the united states and in the world uh, but in puerto rico this mountain you can see all the valleys you can see all the oceans all the all throughout the, the ocean and in fact you can see the peak hills of many other mountains from thousands and thousands and thousands of miles away it's extremely impressive you see 
from these peaks of these mountains you can see in different directions at times you climb so much where there's these small homes at the top of these mountains you understand to a point that at, at least you, you you would consider to probably go in jeep or even walk because there are so extreme the heights and they make homes in the top peaks of these mountains they're built up there and you know it's so impressive because from a higher view you can see so much better better you can see so much higher in the parts of the mountain your perspective is better you understand you can see everything from that higher view of that mountain you know and this is what's so powerful you know, God wants you and me to live that kind of 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 necessary life. You know, not 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 in the edge of a mountain. You know, but climbing. You know, climbing in the sense that we are climbing continuously. You know, in our spiritual life. You understand? You see, you 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 got to see that God is building into your life you know, an extraordinary, you know, uh, workmanship that requires, you know, this kind of activity that you are always looking upward. You understand? There's no other way and no other place to look but upward. Um, you know, God, you know, wants to take you into a place. Here it is, you know, not physically in the, the edge of a mountain. I'm not saying that. But some mountains, I'm telling you right now, some mountains you can mount up, you know, to be met in your own household, in your own home. What do you mean by that? Well, you know, that you have, you know, that you encounter whatever you and God can, where you can, get, and God can get along in a place in your household where you're quiet with him. It's like that mountain, totally shutting down the world. My friend, well, you get a better view of everything and all the things that are around you and, and everything else that is, uh, you know, uh, in the reach of you. There is no spot like that spot on the earth. That spot that you you come in and you you are there with the Father, you know, encountering encountering Him in the quiet place of your household. You see, I think there everyone at any given time feels like they want to run, they want to run far and they want to run so far, far, far from everything. Because they want to be apart from everything. They want to be apart. They, they want to be in solitude and, and tranquility and in such a silence and peaceful matter that you can only, only encounter the Father. You see, I believe that, you know, there is no other place like that place that we encounter. No other spot on the earth that you can reach as we climb that specific mountain that you encountered there in your household. You can climb the highest mountain in the world and it won't do you any good, my family, unless you're able to see. You see? Unless you're able to see. But we meet with God in our intimacy in that very encounter with the Father. We are able to see, to see how the Father views, to see the things that the Father wants to reveal to his sons, the mysteries that he has in store, the very true revelation of who God is and who we are, what he ought, what we has, what he has designed for our lives. See, David said this, he made my feet as hind feet and set me on high places the deer was made for mountains the deer was made to, to to and was equipped was equipped that he may be in the higher places that's where he was safest you're following me that's where he preferred to be amen the deer was made for the higher mountains he was equipped that he was always always climbing this was the safest place for him this is where he preferred to be 
Let me ask you this. What is your preferences today in your life? What is your delight? What are the things that you like most that you really, really honestly would be number one in your life? I mean, out of all your preferences, what is the one number one preference that you have? Ask yourself. I believe, I believe that I can say this, that David would have said, meditating upon the Lord. Meditating upon the Lord. I really believe that God wants and prefers you, all of us, to have a life a life that we prefer to be in this manner, have as his life, his, the preference, you know, this is the preference to meditate upon the Lord. Because you see, he didn't make us for the lowlands. He didn't make us to become, just to become something. And how do you become, you know, just, just, just for anything, you see, how do you become something? God wants us to, he, he wants us to follow to a degree that we don't come up, you know, just swimming against down the stream. It's not about streaming, uh, swimming downstream. You know, he, he, we come up, we come up through struggle by struggle. Whereas as we, we, we climb, you know, we will reach plateaus in those climbing times and, and God will allow us to rest in those climbing moments. If you watch a video of this specific deer that is climbing, he takes moments that he sits like a plateau. But in that plateau, he's actually eyesighting where he's going to place his next, his next uh, foot to 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 settle his 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 body weight so he can continue to climb. Let me tell you, if you see a video of of these deers climbing, he's made my feet like hind. Um, it, it, it just it's just so inclined. That you think the, 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 the deer is, is, is going to fall and die and kill himself. That's how steep these mountains are. And, but he reaches plateaus and God also allows us to have a plateau that we can allow us to rest. And he knows how much we can take. He doesn't give us more than we can actually handle. In fact, he's given us his Holy Spirit, everything we need to be able to climb. But you know, you see that a lot of people want to linger on this plateau. They, they reach the plateau and they say, okay, this period of rest becomes for them their permanent status. Because, you know, the next climb, you see, it's it's you have to understand that this is a preparation for the next climb that's coming up. It's not for you to linger, but only for a period, short period of rest, because it's taking you and preparing you for the next climb that it's on its way. But a lot of folks are willing to, excuse me, to climb just a first plateau. And that is as, that's as high as they want to go. Some people will want to look at the mountains and look at the peaks and, and they'll say, oh, you know, I, I'll, I'll, I'm good where I'm at. I don't need to climb any further. I'll stop right here. They will never go any further. They will never go any further. They won't desire to go any further. You know, let, let me ask you this. Have you, have you reached your full potential? Do you know what your full potential is in the Lord? Yeah. Some people look at the mountains and say, I'm good where I'm at. But some people look at the mountains and say, I'm going further. I'm reaching higher. I desire more. Did you ever heard me say about, you know, going from the shallow waters into the deep waters, desiring the now and the more of God, you know, digging deeper, seeking more, searching more, desiring more. The Bible says clearly in the book of Chronicles, it tells us, seek the Lord and he, for he is my strength. I will seek the Lord as a determination forevermore, my face forevermore. And the Bible says in many places where the Lord said, seek me, seek me, seek me. And I shall reveal myself. And knowing the Father through the Son in a revelatory way by the truth of the Holy Spirit, 
It is a seeking process. It is a continuously climbing the peak of the mountain and never stopping. Have you reached, do you know your full potential? Let me ask you this. Huh? Not really. Not really. No one knows their full potential. That is a reality. There is none of us that have reached or know their full potential. Let me tell you that the only way you the only way you'll discover your full potential, hallelujah, it's going to be to set your heart and your mind on what God wants for you to be and to keep climbing until Jesus comes in glory. And to keep climbing until Jesus comes in glory. That's it. And he comes in glory or he calls you home, whichever comes first. See, there's a time when you should there is there is never a time when you should be stop climbing because you see we were made to be climbers we were made to be climbers we were made to be climbers you see it is always always a very clear result of obviously being at a higher place because God never made us for flatlands. He made us to be climbers. We can see better. There's a better view. There we find solitude at the peak of the mountain that we won't find anywhere else. This is what David is speaking about. He made my feet like hind feet and placed me in high places. When you can get above all things, that things that live around you, that surround you, when you get above people in terms of separation, you know, setting yourself apart above the circumstances of all the things. It's just an experience. Let me, let me, let me just give you a little insight. When a pilot gets into these small aircrafts and he flies, he feels and thinks and, 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 and you know, he, 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 at the heights that he is flying, this, this, this sensation that is provided to him that it's undescribable, undescribable. Uh, you know, he, he flies in, in, that, to a point that he, he sees and he says, you know, uh, you think about these little planes that you, you know, how can they sustain themselves so small, but yet he senses and feels that anything is accomplished, Shibble, that it's possible. You see, he flies and he reaches these heights looking down above everything, you know, and he says, wow, I can do this. You see, I can do this because he has an insight from the greatest height that he can reach. In fact, yesterday, um, we we had the opportunity of seeing someone was uh, paragliding. Um, I think it was hand gliding, uh, but there were paragliding. And we can see it from far away because obviously it was elevated, but it was way far away. I desire to do that someday. The sensation of being at greater heights this is what the Lord is speaking about. The solitude, when you and me can learn how to enjoy solitude. David knew what that meant. To enjoy the solitude is to understand what it is to experience and to live up in the mountain alone with God. Alone with God. Notice that God called Moses alone. You see, that God dealt with Abraham alone. That God dealt with Jacob alone. That God dealt with David alone. Hallelujah. I think we share this before in, in many of the forums. You know, that desolation, the desert, is where God truly feeds us. He said, God made my feet like hind feet, and he set me upon the high places. He made me like that. Let me ask you, do you know what God made you ultimately for? Yes, to be conformed into the image and likeness. Do you know what God had made, had in mind when he, when he made you and conformed you? How many of you truly believe that you are on track with God? in terms of his desire and purpose. You may follow it once a while. You, you're probably, you know, you, you're in the track to fulfilling God's purpose for your life. If you sense that is the reality, come on, be real. Come on, acknowledge it. I know you're at home, you know. If you sense you're following God's 
very fulfilling God's purpose right now. Can I ask you that? You really can say that, believe that. I am on track. I am on track. Can you really say that? I am on track. Or maybe you can say, what does it mean that I'm on track, Pastor? What are you trying to say with that? You know, you know, as God, you know, hasn't left us here for sure, you know, to look down on us and to have us wonder and flounder to see what, you know, we can get out of life. Or what's the next track that we are to take or to become? No, 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 no. God has caused us to be upward. You know, God wants his people to be climbing because up, you know, there is closeness to him there is closeness we get a better view of things it's up there that we get a greater better picture of what the things are from down here you see there it is up there that we get a better view of all things that are closest to us you know near us you know it is in that bedroom that bathroom that um, living room that that study room when you get on your knees you close your eyes and you get before the Lord and you just reach and can do greater, better things than reaching the highest mountain, like the mountain of Kima, Kila, Kimahora in Tanzania. You see, this is where you truly reach higher levels. Because when you're close, when you close your eyes before God and you shut them before the living God, like being in a mountain peak because God will give you spiritual vision, insight, discernment, and perception like you've never had before. Hallelujah. You'll never have before. Your perception when you come into the lowlands and to the areas around you elsewhere, now you have a different perspective. And that's what happened to David. David understood that God made his feet as hind feet, that he made track into moving always heading upward. That was the right track to be. A lot of times we had we, we see that David was running. He did. A lot of times we see he was running from his enemies, you know. But when he was not running, when he was not running, he said, he has made my feet to be in the mountains, to be in the hinds, to, like feet like hinds, to be in the mountains. David spent a lot of time in the mountains. He knew he was made to climb. So as a deer was made to climb. He looked at his life, what it was like from the time that Samuel anointed him amongst his brothers. David was always climbing. You see, the view of his life is that he was always climbing from there on the moment he was anointed. You see, no one else is better designed and made for the mountains where the pure air there's pure and crystal water. There's better view in those mountains. That's where it is. God has made us, made you to head up and never to be satisfied. Whereas, you know, to be grateful, of course, and not complacent. But now as a Christian believer, our life is never easy. It's never been easy. It's never going to be easy. And praise God for that. Now listen to this because, you know, if life is never, Christian life is never meant to be easy, you can have ease and comfort and pleasure, hallelujah, that he is the one that is setting our tracks ahead of us, you know? Ease and comfort is not going to do that, you see? God desires that there in a relationship, you know, be here today and you may ask yourself, where is your now? Where is your relationship in that, in that manner? When we begin to climb the mountain, remember this first. You always, we're going to have real challenges. Listen, there's going to be times where we don't see the peak of a cloud. You ever seen a mountain that it's covered from the peak of a cloud? We lived in many years, you know, overseas, and we, we looked upon this mountain that was miles and miles away, and we were lived on a very high uh, apartment building, and we can see from one side the mountain, 
and the tip, tip of the mountain at times filled with snow. At times it was covered, the peak, you know, with clouds. You know, at times you find yourself that when you are on track and you're going further, deeper in this climbing, you start climbing and the, and, the, and the cloud starts covering the peak and you can't see the mountain. And you say, oh my God, what's happening now? I can't see anything. Where am I going? What am I doing? Where am I headed, Lord? You ever ask yourself that? And maybe where this is where you feel you at today. It's okay. The cloud is covered and it's hovered over the peak and it's, it's covered in the direction you're going. You can't see anything where you're headed. And you say, my goodness, now, Lord, what, what's going on? Where am I headed? And you have no idea where you're headed. It sounds like a lot like faith. How is this going to be resolved? How is this going to go about? Let me ask you a question. How many times have you had a real sense of direction in your life? How many times you've had a real sense of direction? Do you know where you're going? You see, when is the last time that you stopped to see where you at right now in your trail? When was the last time you stopped? When was the last time you paused enough? Have you allowed the clouds to come down to the mountain peak that God has for you? And to see part of the cloud, you know, at times, this cloudness, you know, we see it, and it comes in the form of an old sin, and it clouds us. Sometimes it's God putting the cloud, and He's He's going to He's gonna make you us walk into the cloud, cloud walk into the cloud when we cannot see. Does that make any sense? God is calling us to walk sometimes into clouds that we cannot see. Because he wants us to teach us something very profound. Absolute blind trust. Absolute blind trust. God wants to teach us absolute blind trust. Where we can see where we are not, where we cannot see where we're going. You see? We can't see. Well, you can't see where your next foot is going to be stepping. That is absolute blind trust. You see, this is what I plead to God, and I, 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 I may say, I encourage you, I beseech you, I, I, I plead with, with all my heart that you don't live a life, you know, just for existing, that you don't live a life just for living life, that you're headed somewhere, and we, we certainly know for sure that this heading has to be only centered and, 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 and fundamentally you know, established in the perfect desire of the will for the works that he obviously ordained before the foundation of the world for your life, for our lives. Don't ever be satisfied with anything less than what God wants for you to be. Don't ever be satisfied for anything less. Let me tell you that this will cause some tr struggle. But you must, must steadfast. You must press on. Amen? How much of your investment is truly in the trail of the climbing for the God's will and purpose for your life? For his divine purpose. The one that will matter in heaven. Let me tell you something else. There is a risk involved when you start climbing a mountain. When you see a lot of people that have started Christian life. And then when it happens to they realize what they what this is demanding from them what is the expectation what is the true lordship of our god and they say wait a minute wait a minute this is not what i'm talking about this is not the kind of commitment i'm looking for i'm out i'm out they say i'm out i have no commitment with the local church i got no commitment with god's calling in my life you see God, God's, the Lordship of God, Jesus Christ's Lordship, it's pretty straightforward, you see, but I need to ask you a question, you, 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 you either 
have the choice of living a carnal Christian life or not, or just a carnal, or you can have faith in that the peaks that you say, it, it's, it doesn't make a difference if I fall a hundred times, I'm going to seek and go ahead, you know, in the Lord, stepping forward and believing that the Lord is making my feet like hind feet to climb mountains. This is not a two-minute people Christian walk, you know, that are willing to quit, you know, when the going gets tough, right? But let me tell you, this is when we, we continue to climb. If you stop climbing, you will never know, and you will miss, you will never know, and you will miss what God has in store for his greater purpose in your life. You ever people fear going into the deeper waters? You ever realize people fear the, the heights? I mean, literally. Oh, that's not for me. You know, think of this, of a reality that spiritually God wants you to reach. A desire of the Father. You see? One day, it may be too late to realize that you've missed what you've missed because the Lord has greater things for you in store. It takes determination to keep climbing. The question is, how many of us are willing? Isaiah said these words. He said, here my Lord am I. Send me. That reminds me of a powerful song that here I am. Send me Lord. I mean, that it, it, it's it's in Spanish and English. Here I am, Lord. Send me. I wonder how many of you will honestly say, even now, with no strings attached, every rope is cut, no bridges are extra existing, no shortcuts, but you say whatever you say, Lord, here I am, I am willing. Huh? If my heart is clean and my focus and my attention is upon Jesus Christ, now what does it look like? Listen, everything else pales to insignificance. Everything else. Because the Lord fills it all and it's all in all. So, what really matters? You know, what do you want out of life? What counts most in your life? Huh? Are you willing to tell him today, I, I, I'm, I, I'm done, Lord. I got it, God. Whatever it is you want from me, I'm available. Here I am. Whatever it is. Huh? He makes my feet like hind feet, and he places me on higher grounds. Let's pray. God, I pray that our eyes be filled with you, my Lord. There's so many things right now, Lord, that causes us to, Lord, just, uh, you know, to, to fumble away from the very essence, my Lord. Our eyes are constantly being filled with things around the world and that they parade before us and and lord father these things these reasons cause us to struggle father over surrender they causes us to struggle over a life commitment with you my lord because it becomes difficult and such circumstances become painful in this struggle father would you unfog the eyes of your people right now lord right now would you cause, Lord, for your people that they may see your majesty, your glory, your honor, your holiness, your righteousness, your merciful giving, your loving, your kindness, Lord, that you will help, Lord, us, that they may see and us we may see as you, Father, have caused us to reign upon us, Lord, that you may cause us, Lord, to help us in our daily life because of the power of resurrection, my Lord. Father, that you provide discernment, Lord, in this personal walk of life, of love life with you, my Lord. Your love that may be over, it is overshadowing us, surrounding us, sustaining us, Lord. 
Father, I pray, Father, the love that is undergearing us and upholding us in your presence, my Lord, recognizing you that all its personal worth and father wrapped up in you and my relationship with you it's all about you my lord that you will give a glimpse to everyone here that it's listening lord and within their hearts of that all the things that are hindering right now right now to fulfill your perfect will the perfect fulfillment give them clarity father father that you've bought for their lives but, Father, open their eyes. Open their eyes that they will be repentance, Father, from their walk to walk in your ways, my Lord. Open their eyes. Give them the insight that they may see further, Lord. Father, give them clarity of their current status, my Lord. Purify the hearts, my Lord. I pray, my Lord, for the fulfillment of your beautiful works in their lives, that you will grant us wisdom. Grant them wisdom, courage, to confess and repent, Lord, and to turn back, back from their, Lord, or their Father ways, that they may, Father, remain on track with your walk, to keep upward, seeking, Lord, and climbing, Lord. Father, I thank you for your love, for your forgiveness, and for your cleansing, and for your power, as this revelatory word of who you are and what you desire for our lives Elevate your people, that they may desire to go deeper, go further. Father, that they will fear not, Lord. That you may elevate them, Father, that they may see, Lord. You give them that time that where they find themselves in the upper, Father, room. In the upper part of the climbing, Lord. That they may have a better view, insight of you, my Lord, through your eyes away from everything else. For there is the impartation of bread of life. There, Lord, is an intimacy, inquiry and inquiring, and Father, encountering the living God. I pray in the name of Jesus, my Lord, that our growth will be not one for boasting, but one, Father, for the edification of the fulfillment of your word in each and one of their lives, Lord, and for the body of Christ for the gifts to be manifested, for the unity of the body, because this is the knowledge of Christ, of knowing Christ. I thank you, Lord, for the growth that you're giving to your people. I bless them, Lord. I give you honor. I give you the glory. And I give you all, for you are deserving of it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. God bless you. The Lord be with you. And I pray that you continuously Live a life that it is climbing upward and for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's waiting on you. God bless you. And I'll see you soon. This is Pastor Jeff from Centerville Assemblies of God. And I look forward to seeing you soon again. Bye-bye now.